Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Rajiv Kumar. I'm the Director of Marketing at Virginia Transformer Corporation. And on behalf of Virginia Transformer, I would like to welcome you all to our webinar on transformer design and manufacturing for natural ester fluids. Thank you for your time. And um, this one hour webinar will uh, focus on uh, a very interesting subject uh, within our industry. It is on how we can build power transformers that can integrate into sustainable, renewable, and environmentally friendly installations and projects, uh, which is um, you know of increasing prominence for the right reasons today. Also. Um, you know, how transformers, uh, you know, a key, you know, one of the largest components of a power system uh, can be built to be fire retardant and uh, therefore continue to ensure installations uh, against fire hazard and uh, contribute towards a lower uh, insurance premium. Uh, uh, overall. A couple of uh, housekeeping rules as we get into this uh, webinar. Uh, uh, please uh, put your uh, uh, phone on mute for those who are joined by phone. Uh, also, there will be, uh, as I will mention in the upcoming slides, there'll be a separate Q&A session at the end of the webinar. We're going to capture all your questions and we're going to answer them. We look forward to that. Another thing uh, I would like to uh, mention is, um, uh, you know, you will use this, you will hear this term uh, FR3 being used interchangeably with uh, uh, natural ester fluid. Uh, it's uh, FR3 is uh, the uh, insulation fluid, the uh, name of the insulation fluid uh, or the natural ester fluid as supplied by Cargill, our, uh, uh, our partner who provides us uh, the insulation oil. Uh, uh, natural ester uh, insulation oil. Um, so without uh, uh, further ado, uh, we'll get started with the webinar. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Rajiv Kumar. I'm the Director of Marketing for Virginia Transformers. And um, uh, I'm excited to welcome you for our webinar on transformer design and manufacturing for natural ester fluids. Thank you again for your time. I'll be your host for the webinar. Uh, we have two technical experts from Virginia Transformer who will be speaking uh, to the slides on this webinar. One is Perminder Panasar. He is our technical director for Virginia Transformer Corporation. And the other is Balakrishna Mani. He is the research and development supervisor for Virginia Transformer. These two gentlemen will be taking you through the slides, and I will be uh, uh, interjecting with a few comments and uh, questions as we go through as well. Uh, just to remind you, this uh, webinar uh, uh, comes with continuing education credits. So after completion of the webinar, uh, you, you can send a message uh, uh, to the marketing group uh, ID uh, that will be given uh, for Virginia Transformer, and you uh, will be receiving a certificate with the uh, continuing ed education credits. Uh, so this webinar is a part of a series of events that we have put together uh, to celebrate our 50-year history in power transformer uh, manufacturing for United States. So there are many events that are underway. Uh, this is our 50th year, uh, uh, and uh, we are celebrating it in a grand way. There are many events uh, that are being executed throughout the year, and uh, customer webinars uh, are a part of it, are an important part of it. And uh, we want to thank 
our dedicated customers such as yourself for the continued support and uh, for um, putting uh, your trust in the uh, technology and the value uh, the power transformers from Virginia Georgia Transformer bring. Please note this webinar is being recorded and it will be available uh, on our website. Uh, it will also be available uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you have a question as we're going through uh, the webinar presentation, uh, you can uh, type it in the question and answer section, which is part of the GoToWebinar platform. And uh, our technical experts will take time to answer it uh, at the end of the presentation. There'll be a Q&A session uh, after the webinar uh, place and uh, we will uh, take your question and answer them. Okay, now I invite our technical director, Herminder Panasar, to talk about the transformer standards to which uh, natural ester fluid transformers are built to. Hey, uh, thank you, Rajiv. Uh, thanks for the introduction and setting the stage. Uh, for Bala and I to get started with this topic. It's a very interesting topic. And uh, let's go and get started with how the need arise of, uh, you know, natural ester fluids. So historically, you know, since the transformers have come, uh, have, uh, you know, I mean, the history pretty much started, they all were built with mineral oil. And when we use mineral oil, being its inflammability, it was, you know, limited use. Uh, special places like chemical plants, uh, you know, and uh, on the rooftop of some hospital, the basement of some hotel. So all those places, it is not considered to be safe. So people were left with only one option of dry type transformers. So that again limits up the capacity, the current carrying, you know, voltages, all those kind of things. It's limited. So then there's a need ar arise, uh, you know, as industry grew of having a and transformer with inflammable materials. So the natural esters were the one of the easy ones to get, or in fact, you know, it started with some synthetic oils uh, like silicon and some, some of the petroleum products uh, separated with the with a high uh, fire point, flash point. So this all research, you know, came into existing sometime in 1970s and it was developed uh, you know, a couple of three uh, companies that develop their own fire retardant uh, fluids, so which are high uh, flammability. Uh, so that way they are they they are they are you know classified as uh, non-flammable or you know. So so that's what started. But actually, in real uh, production, the commercialization of this this whole fluid started sometime in 90s. So from that point, you know, even if you take 90s to and we are in 2021. So this thing has been existing in 25 to 30 years. So which is not a too long a time for for anybody to perfect, uh, you know, uh, or bring all these all these values, acceptance, the criteria um, to to the point where mineral oil is. So it, and although you know these are the standards which which talk about uh, you know fluid, the acceptance, and some of them are in the in the guideline stage. So we have the data which was submitted by various consumers, you know, transfer manufacturers, uh, the test lab, which did some research. So it, 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 data collection is going on. And some of them are, are converted into guides and some are being converted into standards. And also there are some standards which are specific to natural ester fluid. And you would hear us using natural ester fluid versus FR3 because FR3 is a Cargill brand uh, for for uh, for na of natural ester, which is most commonly used in, in the U.S. market, and you know that's the reason th they have become almost synonym. Somebody calling for natural ester fluid, uh, it apparently becomes FR3. So so that's the reason keeping that in mind. So if, if we say one or other word, it means the same thing. So. Some of the, uh, you know, like second bullet uh, acceptance and maintenance of IEEE C57 147, that's a guide for, for natural ester fluids. 
same way the gas generation based on the data collected from the transformers and service which are operating for 20 25 30 years and now so that data we are giving a guide uh, it's becoming a guide as c57 155 similarly the high temperature application now uh, natural esters uh, due to their own uh, their, their um, basic properties they could withstand slightly higher temperature uh, of of operation so those are i know c57 154 that's guide and same way uh, standard one 1276 is, is another guide for high temperature application now the the first bullet on top uh, and those are the standard which are generic standards for transformers and they do talk about mineral oil as well as uh, you know natural esters so those things you know it has there are a few properties which are different we'll go through those uh, as we go into details the few properties which are different but these standards for in general for power transformer they do talk about both uh, both, both both types of fluid. Yeah. So this slide shows us, you know, uh, natural esters, how how they are, uh, you know, located. These this, this is a green product, so if they are the base is, uh, um, as we see, natural esters. So it's a it's an, a green um, uh, product, uh, and for, especially for FR3 in water temp, which is uh, uh, brand from Cargill, so that is based out of soybean oil. So they they are uh, green products, so it is environment friendly. Um, also, they have a very high of flash point, fire point, and uh, the fire point is in the range of 360 degrees Celsius, and flash point is in the range of 330 degrees Celsius, which classifies them to be uh, fire retardant and, and you know uh, so minimum requirement of I will see it makes uh, minimum requirement of 300 degrees Celsius. So they are classified in, the, in, the, in, the, in that category. So this slide actually goes through uh, the, the basic properties of, of insulating fluid in transformers per se. So as I said, conventionally, industry has been using mineral oil. So when we compare uh, mineral oil versus uh, natural ester side by side, uh, there are a few properties which you will see, they are same. Uh, if not similar, and uh, you know, like uh, the very first one, oil breakdown value. So breakdown value tell, or the dielectric strength of of the fluid, that is one of the basic property of of any insulating fluid which we would use in the in the power transformer. So that actually is same. So whether we are using mineral oil or our natural ester, so it it is same. It is you know, if it's a bulk oil, 35 kV for two millimeter gap are exactly same criteria for, for, for a natural ester. Now, the second property and the third property which we'll go through, this, this is, uh, these are different. So now natural esters have a tendency to hold a whole lot uh, moisture within themselves. And that is without affecting the dielectric properties. So you see the number which we say, this is the fresh oil coming out of barrel. Uh, is uh, acceptable at 35 ppm, so 35 parts per million for, of, of, of water contents are acceptable uh, in, in mineral oil, whereas that one goes all the way up to 200 ppm. So, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a big difference, and that's just because the moisture saturation uh, of the, these two fluids are, are different. For instance, you know, at 30 degrees Celsius temperature, so typical mineral oil will saturate at 83 ppm uh, of water. Whereas for, for at 10, 30 degrees Celsius, natural ester needs 1171 ppm. So, so it, you know, saturation means, you know, it will hold that much moisture before we start seeing free, free water in, uh, in, the, in the oil. So it, it can hold a whole lot of moisture, but it still does not affect the dielectric properties of it. So the second property which we discussed, which is still different, is power factor. So power factor or dissipation factor, again, these are two commonly used uh, words. So they are, uh, again, big difference at 25 degrees Celsius, it is 0 0.05 for mineral versus 0.2 for, for natural ester. And uh, for, for at 100 degrees Celsius, it's 0 0.3 versus 4 4%. 4 so this is a big difference. And due to the same reason, when uh, a transformer is built with mineral oil, 
worst transformers, which is when designed and manufactured with, uh, with a natural ester, they will have a different insulation power factor. So we see IEEE talks about 0.5% acceptable power factor on new transformers, and that is this mineral oil. So for if it, the same transformer is switched from mineral to, uh, to, to natural ester, or it's designed with natural ester, we may not be able to get to 0.5%. So th there are guidelines available, no specific number, but in general, thumb rule would be that you're going to measure about one and a half times the power factor as that of mineral oil in natural ester. And other, other criteria going into new equipment. This, so this, the first one, first uh, uh, table, the first three lines, like they talk about the new oil from the, from the vendor, and the, the bottom table is the new oil in the in the equipment. So per se, we shipping transformer to you. So it has to meet these these criteria. The oil has to meet this criteria. So those are again, you know, they they vary the same way as we are talking as we talked about the new oil from vendor. So the big difference in the last line is, is the kinematic vis viscosity. So and natural esters are way more viscous and, and, and by, by the nature of them. So, so they're more viscous and that will, you know, Bala will go into details how design uh, is changing uh, with, with the viscosity because it needs a bigger, wider ducts uh, for it to flow for the same cooling uh, purpose. So uh, when we say dielectric is comparable, the dielectric strength is comparable. So dielectric circuitry may not change a whole lot because of uh, to, to, to get the strength, but we have to give a higher cooling duct if you want to maintain the same temperature uh, rise on, on the windings and uh, in general. So that's, that's the thing which we pay attention uh, when we design the transformer and manufacturability of it. Similarly, the cooling radiators may have different uh, fluid thickness to, to achieve a proper flow of fluid uh, through the fin. So though these are the few things, and as we go through, these are basic property we addressed here, uh, but how they affect the design and manufacturing of it, we will cover that in, in the slides come up. So we, we talked uh, the basic difference of uh, the, the uh, properties of uh, mineral oil versus natural esters. Now, this slide actually covers slightly different aspect of the same thing. Uh, how that those properties affect com combination of this fluid with respect to paper or any other dress board which, is, which are used in transformer. So the two columns on the right hand side, they, they show the dielectric constant and the viscosity. So again, viscosity is a big difference, but when you talk about dielectric uh, properties of these, they are very comparable. So paper 3.2 versus 3.4, uh, same way we go to molded press board, the last line is 3.5 versus 4. So everywhere we see the properties which, which uh, uh, natural ester show slightly better improved uh, uh, you know, version of it. So we could utilize that and also thermal um, uh, ability to hold higher temperature and without affecting the total loss of life of transformer. So uh, we, we, will, we will address these things, but you know, overall comparatively, the dielectric properties are very similar, and that's the reason it, uh, it allows us to retrofit uh, the older transformers from mineral oil into uh, to, to natural esters. And uh, I'm going to invite Bala here, uh, you know, to, to go into details of, of these properties and uh, vis a vis how it affects us, uh, our design, what, what precautions we take, what additional things we, we do for make when we design a transformer with natural esters. And also from there, we will go into the process and manufacturing of it. Well, I up to you. Thank you, Parminder, for setting up the stage and showing the basic differences between the uh, pro properties with respect to mineral oil and uh, how these properties are going to affect the, the, wind, uh, the design of the transformer. And the earlier, Slide, we saw the differences, the two properties which are mainly affecting the transformer design. The first one is the dielectric constant, and the second one is the viscosity. The dielectric constant, you know, the changes, the stress distribution that we will see in the upcoming slide, and the same way the viscosity increases the, the flow resistance which 
further you know reduces uh, the convective heat transfer properties and uh, meets uh, additional duct clearances to meet the similar uh, winding rises and the hot spot rises per IEEE standard. And in this slide, you see this. There are some published literature where the properties of the fluid and under different wave shapes are shown here. And uh, the power frequency property, which is an operating voltage, and for that, the differences are very comparable and uh, they, they are, in fact, better for certain configurations of electrodes. But when it comes to lightning impulse or, or fast moving wave shapes where you have a higher dv by dt, the published, published data shows they are on the lower side compared to the mineral oil. And the next one is the surface properties where the insulation meets with the, uh, the fluid. The surface properties are on also comparable, but it is still on slightly lower side. And it varies again with respect to the, the electrode shape and the configuration. There are some references at the end for people who want to look at it. We have given here. Okay. Continuing with the same thought process, the properties, dielectric properties of the ester fluid, we have just saw that the four different properties. So in general, we can say that the dielectric properties are close to that of a mineral oil, but there is a catch. The electrode profile plays an important role along with the processing. So the processing also needs to meet the standards so that the properties of the fluid fluid will will maintain its dielectric strength. So let next in next slide we will see the stress distribution how it is impacted by these properties. The design of the transformer is is directly related with the with the insulation con dielectric constant and the electrode profile. So we we know that dielectric electric field, the dielectric field or are we call electric field during an operation is in, inversely proportional to the dielectric constant so in our case we have many dial, many different types of dielectric starting from press board then paper insulation then we have molded insulation so all these are, are having a different dielectric constant so what happens is that the the insulation the stress appearing in the insulation will be changing with respect to the dielectric constant. So the higher the dielectric constant, you will see lower stress. So in this case, what happens, your stress will be more moving towards the solid insulation comparing to the mineral oil designs. So we will see that in the next slide. So Bala, I think you're setting the stage now for what are the design considerations for the unique properties of the ester fluid? And uh, how does it differ from a mineral oil design? But how, you're, how we essentially ensure we deliver to the design ratings of the transformer and the same life of the transformer, uh, taking into considerations, uh, taking in some special considerations based on the uh, properties of the ester fluid. So, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is this is a very valid point, Rajiv. And the design of the transformer, if you see, uh, in this case, we have shown one with mineral oil and one with ester oil. So, if you take an any space between a winding or between ore to the first winding, the stress distribution there is a shift and the illustration at the top you see the insulin the stress uh, highest stress is close to six which is appearing in the fluid and next there is a dip and that's where the change in dielectric constant happens which is an press board where your stress is close to 2.9 but, but if you come to the ester fluid your stress in oil is kind of reduced 
however the stress in the in the solid you see it's going very close to the four number and and that is what summarized here the stress in solid can increase up to 40% with respect to the mineral oil and the stress in fluid can go low reduced up to 5 to 7% this essentially comes from the property difference and this is not exactly related to the to the uh, dielectric properties the dielectric properties are compared comparable for a similar stress level they are inferior but in this property for a, for someone who sees the basic fundamental concept it feels like you are you are you are, you are improving with the ester fluid but it is actually it increases the burden on the solid insulation and this becomes critical when you go to higher voltages and you have a lead high voltage lead going to the bushing and you have nearby ground plane or something so there your stress on the solid insulation can go beyond the withstand value of the insulation paper and you're going to talk about what are the margins and design practices to to address that correct right. And we saw about the point stress distribution uh, with respect to the mineral oil, and the generally the safety factor is assuming the properties of the uh, ester fluid. So there is some reduction in the withstand. So these two are put together. The the design is made with somewhere in the range of safety factor of 30 percent. Uh, it can vary. from location to location the, the the safety margin will vary and the, the very important property when it comes to the active part design it means the core and coil design you have to control the stress on the corners of the electrode in in here you see there are two illustrations one on the left for mineral oil one on the right for the ester fluid on the left the color spot red hot spot is mostly in the fluid that means your stress is on the fluid but whereas on the right your stress is actually on the solid insulation so what it tells us that when you design with an fr3 fluid for an fr3 fluid your stresses in the inside the active part can go up and this they the ratio of increase are not linear because any sharp electrode or highly divergent field the increase in stress is, is depends on the profile how sharp it is and so so additional safety margins and additional protections and reinforcement and additional uh, molded components are need to be introduced so that your field is profiled to have the stress values within the limit and if there is a reference you can look at the uh, we have given here and there is also an article we have published in transformer magazine this year january which talks little more about this phenomena so that can give you more idea about this okay coming to the next main property is thermal design so the basis for the differences in thermal design is kinematic viscosity of the fluid so in this graph here uh, which which shows the differences in viscosity with respect to temperature and what is more important for us as a transformer manufacturer the operating temperature transformer if it is close to 100% m rating It, the temperature stays in the range of 80 to 100 degrees celsius at that level the viscosity is almost four times and because of this property the oil that has to be increased so that the flow resistance is comparable to uh, mineral oil design and then even if we make the flow resistance we it is impossible it is can it's not possible to bring it very close to the mineral oil design however the temperature margin has to be increased to meet the top oil rise the winding rise and the hot spot rise 
because the general standards are still uh, has a limit of 80 degrees celsius for a 65 degree winding approach so that is the basis and we will see the limit uh, for core and winding in the next slide that's a pretty significant number uh, the viscosity is four times that of mineral oil so what does it mean to the transformer design uh, yeah let's let's review that to our like four coming slides the limits for the part we we, we have certain limits prescribed by ieee 57 um for that uh, for core the limit is 130 degree and this is not different for ester fluid and for the winding hot spot and winding rise we have 65 and 80 degree celsius so as rightly brought up by by rajiv uh, the fluid viscosity difference has to be factored in into our thermal calculation to meet the temperature and the temperature at the hot spot or can can go can increase up to 10 degree for a like to like transformers which are tested by various researchers so these are all needs to be taken into account and that will will be a foundation for the loading for this transformer uh, at this point of time c5791 does not cover the overloading of ester fluid it only covers the mineral oil but there is a new standard came up last year in 2020 it will be standard 1276 that describes the loading limits and the life of insulation for ester fluid so we shall see the life estimation and the properties how it will behave and what are the temperature limits in the next slide so coming to the loading of for ester fluid the loading is determined by two properties one is the oil property so the temperature during the overload should not come anywhere close to the fill fire or flash point for example mineral oil uh, the guide says at any overloading condition your top oil rise should be 110 degree celsius and the thermal class of the insulation which determines how much we can uh, increase the temperature in the solid insulation without the loss of life these two are the main properties and the insulation life as we know it follows the arrhenius equation we have two constant a and b which is well established for mineral oil and the constant b is is, is same for both, uh, mineral oil and fr3 and the constant a is different if you look into the document c i to please standard 1276 that has more details about this mm -hmm. and for example here we have given the illustration for the life of a paper thermally upgraded paper in an ester fluid you see if we operate up to 130 degree celsius you see you will still have we prescribed 180000 hours or 20.5 years of life and that's what given in the table here if it is a simple uh, non thermally upgraded then your paper can um, thermal class is 120 degree celsius in uh, in natural ester fluid but if if it is a thermally upgraded it is rated for 140 degree celsius and the liquid itself will give you a, give you a normal life expectancy up to 130 degrees celsius and uh, we have some more classifications uh, like hot for uh, for continuous rating and then there is limit for the planned overload rating so planned overload long time emergency loading you can go up to 140 degrees celsius for normal non thermally upgraded and 160 degrees celsius for thermally upgraded and if it is a short time emergency we can go up to 180 degrees celsius so with these limits you can still expect the life of 20.5 years and the calculation procedure is also given 1276 
Thanks, Bala. Uh, I now invite uh, Perminder again to talk a little bit about the manufacturing considerations. So Bala talked about the design considerations specific to the properties uh, that the natural ester fluid brings. Uh, what is what are the implications to manufacturing? So, uh, Perminder, if you could talk to that. Yeah. Thanks, Rajiv, and thanks, Bala. I mean, it is just so much to absorb. And um, you know, with a limited time, I think we are we're touching base on every aspect of of natural ester fluid transformers. Uh, and you know, we 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 just try to go into as much detail as possible. But manufacturing wise, um, there are a few few aspects which which uh, one has to watch, to take care, and you know the many things which are very similar to 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 for the mineral oil. But these are the one which uh, you know we'll we'll go through them uh, step by step in next few slides. So uh, the manufacturing and drying process. So in general, the manufacturing of winding, uh, you know, coil and coil assembly, tank, so they don't change a whole lot. Uh, radiators could be slightly different. That is one possibility. Also, the major difference comes, or let me say, say the, the one of the point of attention is needs to be uh, the drying process. So the coil and coil assembly, uh, most of the manufacturers we use vapor phase drying uh, for high voltage core and coil assemblies. So, and that is, you know, proven to achieve 0.5% moisture uh, in paper, which is uh, very common for mineral oil. The same becomes more important for, for, for a natural extra fluid, just because there's migration process of moisture from, from solid insulation into fluid uh, and vice versa. That becomes a more important factor in in a, in a natural ester fluid transformer. As we talked, it, uh, natural ester has a higher saturation of that point for water, and also it, it can hold more water within itself. So all those things actually, you know, add uh, um, the, the migration process is different. So it is very important for for, for us to ensure that insulation is dried to the extent we need it to be. Uh, uh, as compared to uh, you know mineral oil, it, it's just the dryness needed is the same, but it becomes more critical in this particular process. So these curves actually show different you know water content and, and oil and how, how equilibrium is achieved within the uh, for the moisture content within the solid versus the oil, uh, liquid. So, so that. So the process which is uh, actually almost being the biggest difference in manufacturing is the impregnation process. So insulation is a uh, transform insulation is made up of uh, you know paper product. So it's either paper or pressboard, which could be high density, low density pressboard, molded parts. Um, so it, those uh, insulation that insulation parts they develop they make the dielectric strength only after absorbing the full oil in them. So in mineral oil, the viscosity is known, the, the process is proven for years, and we know how much time it takes uh, at what temperature. So FR3, uh, we discussed earlier, it's four times more viscous than mineral oil. So that actually becomes a challenge, and uh, there, there is a solution to that challenge. Uh, there's two-way solution. One is to improve, uh, increase that uh, time duration for impregnation. So which generally is double the time. So if normally you use 24 hours, you use 48 hours to impregnate it. Also, the second approach on this one is to in increase the temperature. By when we increase temperature, the viscosity decreases, and that will facilitate the same impregnation process. So Virginia and Georgia transformer, uh, our process is established by combination of these two. So we do increase the temperature to facilitate better impregnation and also uh, increase the time. And that actually, we, we, we established this process a few years ago by going through various options we have, going into literature of uh, viscosity, going into how much, you know, uh, experimenting what is the absorption rate uh, of, of, of that fluid at, at that temperature and how, how, how much time it takes. So all that uh, was done and the process was established. So from a customer point of view, oil preservation is one of their preferences, which, which, which they opt for, depending on, on, on their, you know, uh, on 
their preference, their, their history, their facilities, availability, every customer, and size of transformer, of course. So they, they offer either for steel type, uh, tank, uh, nitrogen system, and also all, all conservator tanks. So the first two are very common for small rating transformers. When you go for bigger 100 MB or so, conservator is, is, the, uh, is the most common construction. So from that perspective, there's not much of a change uh, in, in these, these aspects. Uh, you know, from, um, we're using natural esters versus mineral oil. The major difference comes in if it's a conservator job, we, we do recommend that a customer needs to opt for a bladder inside, so which will keep uh, the fluid away from natural air. So, and bladder is not uncommon for mineral oil either, but it becomes no, sort of necessary for, for, for FR, FRP or you know, natural ester fluid. So, Minder, uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, BGA is like, you know, the uh, a very standard test to uh, measure the oil chemistry and the, an indication of the health of the transformer in terms of the dissolved gases uh, profile. So talk a little bit about what that means for the FR3 or natural rest of the fluid. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a very important point. You know, um, DGA over the years, you know, IEEE has uh, collected data from thousands and if not millions of transformers uh, which are put in service and how they behave and uh, it, uh, it, it came to the point hey we have it, it limits established for each hydrocarbons hydrogen and uh, you know carbon monoxide dioxide um, uh, nitrogen oxygen so they all all values are limited and then we could easily assess the you know if the transformer is healthy or it is it is generating any type of gas which could tell us, hey, this kind of uh, fault is, 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 is inside transform or this kind of issue is inside. So we, we haven't reached to that point uh, for uh, for natural esters because the data is not available. Although uh, IEEE has recently issued a guideline, which is IEEE C57155, to which guides us about the values which we are expecting to have from a natural ester transformer. Uh, in general, you know the the, the high uh, temperature gases, which are uh, arcing gases, acetylene, and then we have high temperature gas ethylene. There's not a big difference in the in the in the values which we expect from transformer under normal condition and also under abnormal condition. Uh, the biggest difference comes in the, in the values of ethane, ethane being inherent gas to the to the fluid. So we would see a higher concentration of ethane gas. Uh, dissolve in in the fluid as compared to uh, the mineral oil. So that is the biggest change. And you know, this thing is still in, in developing stage, and it probably will take a few years for us to define a line which is good and which is a uh, uh, questionable data. Okay. Uh, Parminder, with this, you know, key benefits uh, the FR three oil filled transformers offer, uh, you know, the question is, if I have an existing mineral oil filled transformer and I want to take benefit of the FR3 oil, can I retrofill it? And if I do, what are the considerations I need to keep in mind in terms of the ratings uh, uh, and in terms of any other operating uh, uh, parameters I need to be aware of. Can you talk to that please? Yes, Rajiv, uh, actually uh, for, for a consumer, it is a very, very good question. And uh, so we, we, talk, we, we have been concentrating our, our webinar on the new transformer, what we do, how we do, how we ensure it is meeting the required dielectric properties, thermal properties, and you know, it's all well. But also, you know, there's literature available, especially Cargill published by FR3, uh, where there's a recommendation of retrofilling. So if the transformer is designed, manufactured for mineral oil, and it is in, whether it is in service or it is new, there's a possibility of retrofilling it. Now we learned uh, being more viscous, 
so it will have slightly uh, more restriction or more resistance to flow within the winding uh, and the same way with the radiator. So that will actually increase the temperature rise slightly higher. But also, you know, when Bala was talking about loss of life, so standards do not recognize that the loss of life is less as low temperature for, 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 for natural esters. Uh, so we are not taking advantage of that. Here, uh, what, you know, Cargill has when they published it, they said you can run it at a slightly higher temperature and you will have the same uh, life of the transformer. So it does not, it does not, uh, you know, we are not losing any, any life out of that, but it will run slightly higher, expected to be about 10 degrees higher temperature. And we actually have experimented a few jobs um, and we found similar difference. I think it was between five and uh, around five and seven degrees difference uh, in temperature rise. So the winding will run hotter, but it does not affect the life of transformer. Uh, so if, if customer is running up to the top rating, that, that is the option they will go by. Second option is you derate the transformer. If a customer has enough capacity uh, on the transformer, the, the transformer will be derated to the point by maintaining the same temperature rise. And that will actually give slightly the longer life but you know those are the two possibilities of doing it and there is a guide available how to retrofill it what precautions to take what you know parameters to watch also to to fight to became to remain fire hydrant uh the fire retardant you got to uh, watch the mixture of residual oil in in the main uh, uh in the existing transformer which is mineral oil and uh, you know you, you it's recommended to not to have more than personal mixture uh, to maintain its uh, properties uh, being uh, in a fire retardant oil. So those are a few precautions and you know we do if you have any, any such situation arise uh, please contact us. I know we'll be able to help you guide you through and uh, provide process how, how it can be achieved. So it was a good discussion and you know um, uh, it takes pleasure Bala and I would take pleasure to share our knowledge uh, with the team here and we're looking forward for the questions and happy to answer all the questions uh, from the webinar. Thanks, Parminder. And before uh, we close, so just a few key things to uh, understand here are, when you retrofill a mineral oil transformer with FR3, you could keep the same rating of the transformer, but it will be operating at a higher temperature rise or you could pre-rate the transformer to a, a lower MBA, which will be done through a, an engineering calculation mm -hmm. while keeping the same True. temperature rise okay. as the mineral oil transformer. Right. Either way, uh, the, key, what, what, the key point here also is that you're not impacting the life of the transformer uh, in, in the sense that it's gonna be in, in no way a lesser as compared to a mineral oil transformer if the design considerations uh, and the operating considerations as you both highlighted uh, are taken into, in, into, into consideration and uh, about that it is going to give you the benefits of you know a fire retardant uh, mm -hmm. transformer that is very critical for many applications and uh, the, the benefit of, of being environmentally friendly which is also important for many uh, installation and applications so thank you so much we are now ready to take questions so uh, a couple slides which uh, gives the references uh, which Bahala and I took to prepare the, uh, the webinar so these are helpful and I know and we would like to cite them here so these are the uh, knowledge and base which which we use this is one slide and the next slide is coming up here. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks, everyone, again, and uh, thank you, uh, Bala and Parminder. Uh, 
Uh, at this point, I will request uh, uh, our associate Jenna here to read out the questions uh, that have come in. Okay. What precautions need to be taken when dealing with cold temperatures? Negative 30 degrees Celsius, negative 22 Fahrenheit or colder. Deal with many projects in Northern Ontario where these temperatures are common in the winter. Uh, so this is uh, Parminder. Actually, that's a very good question because uh, uh, natural esters have a lower four point as compared to mineral oil. Mineral oil generally is, is good up to minus 40 and special cases minus up to minus 50 degrees Celsius. Whereas the 4.4 FR3 or natural ester is, is limited to minus 20 or so. So I, there are uh, restrictions to using this in the cold temperature. And there is a special cold start uh, process which uh, needs to be followed if we have a transformer which is installed up north where the ambients are real low. Uh, of course, if transformer is running, it is maintaining its temperature. Uh, then it is it's safe for operation, but then if it if it is sitting down and it it gets uh, you know 30 degrees below zero Celsius temperature, then it, we have to follow a cold start process, which could include you know providing extra heaters within the transformer. Uh, but so we have actually limited use to 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 use a uh, use of this transformer in those kind of conditions. Are there any applications where FR3 should not be specified? And what is the cost added to specify FR3? What is the cost of liter of FR3 versus liter of mineral oil? So yes, uh, so this of uh, better quality or more uh, in fire dark product, it does come with an extra cost uh, as well per liter price of uh, FR3 is, is is expensive, is more expensive than, than the mineral oil. It's about how many times? I would say it's about uh, about seven to eight times dollars. Uh, oh, and, and as, a, as a multiple, it would three, be about three times. Three times. So about three times more expensive than regular mineral oil. And uh, you know, same way, it, 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 it's, it does take a separate route for, for us to follow if there's a FR3 job versus uh, mineral oil. So about three times more expensive, just the fluid itself. Do you have a temperature versus water concentration saturation curve for FR3? Yes, uh, so that is available. And, uh, you know, it, so it, it be, is a saturation curve, which actually we have a table and we can actually share with them directly. That's not a problem. It's given in C57147. Uh, it's a table B1, and it gives a side by side comparison of temperature degrees Celsius uh, with every 10 degrees from 0 to 100. And what is the saturation level for mineral versus natural ester? IEEE table. IEEE right? table, sir. How is FR3 oil treated for spills? Does it need a full containment area for the full volume of the transformer? Um, see, it, it, we do not, uh, I would say, you know, there, this is the natural oil. It is a, it's edible process, product actually. So we do not recommend, Virginia actually do not recommend to follow either way, whether it does not any spill uh, restriction or it does. Every, every site has to follow their own local codes. And so that way, they, they, you know, they have to get guided by their local authorities how to uh, how to follow spill protection. Because I have heard from people, okay, you know, even though FR3, our county, our, our, our local authorities are asking us to build containment as like mineral oil. So, you know, it, it needs to be checked by the local authorities and safety rules, courts, what they want them to follow. What is the largest transformer ma manufactured by VTC using FR3 fluid? So VTC manufactured 100, uh, 150 MBA transformer, uh, which was produced last year uh, in our Georgia facility. And we have one coming up this year, which will be 168, 168. 168 MBA transformer. 
for a data center application, if you yeah. remember. And up to 230 kV, uh, and they 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 exist up to 230 kV. Uh, Virginia, we have built up to 161 kV, and then kV delta to, we, have to, we have 230 kV delta we have built, and we have one coming up, which will be 900 BIL 230 kV. Yeah. This is more of a statement. Thanks. This is important. I have witnessed several transformer fires. Never pretty. And then, can you? Can this be used near food processing facilities? Yes, actually, we we don't see any any restriction of the use because anywhere where your mineral oil transformer is suitable, this can go there. In fact, some of the codes would need uh, FR3 or natural ester because of their inflammable uh, nature. They would recommend, they would ask uh, for those like a factory mutual uh, uh, standard. FM standard, the, one of the basic requirement is to have a, uh, you know, a fire retardant uh, oil in it. In a retrofill application, does hot, <laughs> does the impedance change from the original design? No, the impedance, the losses, uh, it will not change. Uh, so the basic parameters, it would remain same. Uh, dielectrics, I would say they, they change, but not to the effect of notice. Only thing which changes is the is the temperature, the running temperature, just because of it being more viscous, it needs a, a you know better cooling ducts. That's the only change. Uh, the basic properties, losses, impedance, uh, exciting current, all remain the same. I just wanted to remind everybody, if you did attend today and you do want continuing education credit, please email marketing at batransformer.com. Again, uh, thanks everyone. Um, we will continue this uh, series of uh, customer webinars uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, look forward to uh, our, uh, uh, on the website, uh, you will find uh, on the main page, a link to the uh, list of upcoming webinars. Uh, we encourage you to sign in. Uh, we will follow up with you as well uh, after the webinar to see, um, uh, you know, what else uh, you need or any other support you may need. Uh, thank you again for your participation and uh, look forward to meeting you the next time. Thanks.